the Washington Mystics, and we are delighted to have you with us, hitting you with a double dose of WNBA action here tonight on ESPN2. Alongside LaChina Robinson, I'm Tiffany Green, and when you think about this Phoenix Mercury team, the first player that comes to mind, the all-time leading scorer in Diana Taurasi. Yeah, Diana Taurasi is drinking from the fountain of youth, and she is hungry to win another championship in Phoenix. It is her competitive drive that pushes this team. She is the leader, but she's got some back up because they've got a big three. Don't forget about 6'9", Brittany Griner on the interior, altering shots with her length, changing things on the defensive end so that they can get out and run. And when they run, they get out to Skylar Diggins-Smith. She's getting comfortable in Phoenix. The four-time All-WNBA selection is playing at a high level and confident about winning her first championship in the WNBA. Well, you just look at the numbers that they put up so far this season, averaging double figures. You know that this is a dangerous trio, and when healthy, why Watch out. Meanwhile, on the other side, you've got a Washington Mystics crew that's still awaiting a little Elena Deladon's return. Meanwhile, they are going to have to rely heavily on Tina Charles. Yeah, as the roster continues to round out for the Washington Mystics, they rely on this player right here, Tina Charles, who has joined forces once again with head coach Mike Tebow looking to win her first championship in the WNBA. They will need her to play great on both ends of the floor, in particular defensively and on the glass with Brittany Griner on the other side. Here at the Entertainment and Sports Arena in Southeast D.C., you see the 6'9", Brittany Griner in the circle with Tina Charles and the Mercury control the tip and have the ball in their hands first with their point guard, Diana Tarazi, year 17 for her. Hand off to Skylar Dickens Smith caught in the air. Brianna Turner finds Kia Nurse, and Nurse able to knock down the three. Nurse, a new addition to this Mercury crew coming over from New York. And that's an important shot for Phoenix. They have not shot the three well so far in their first two games of the season, only 27% from long range, but they have the personnel to be effective beyond the arc. Charles off the mark there, and the Mystics are hoping to have a better shooting night than they had in their opening game against Chicago, shooting under 30%. Meanwhile, Brittany Griner posting up on Charles. This is going to be great action all night long, that competition. Off the miss, Nurse once again eyeing the three, and it's no good. Leilani Mitchell back the other way for the Mystics in her third season with Washington. Foul called on Tarazi. Well, you mentioned the Washington Mystics offense the other night. Mike Tebow was happy with the shots that his team got. They just couldn't get him to go. They will go to Tina Charles on the interior, but this is still a team that likes to spread the floor. And Ariel Atkins, number seven, with the basketball in her hands, is now more of a veteran leader on this team, and she will need to play better on both ends. She was a part of that 2019 championship team, Clay Sons. Contested shot underneath, nothing going. Still early, three nothing lead for Phoenix. Tarazi trying to add to it and does so right there. And that's a welcome sign for Sandy Brondello because they had not been shooting the ball so well beyond the arc. Little drag screen action for Diana Tarazi there to start the break. She doesn't need a lot of space. She had that game winner in the season opener against Minnesota. Meanwhile, finding Brittany Griner again. That's going to be the calling card tonight. Brittany Griner helps push the lead out to an eight nothing run to start this ball game. And Mike Tebow quickly calls for a timeout with 814 to go in this first quarter. Well, Brittany Griner, we know that she can be a dominant player. You talked about that six nine frame and she uses all of its spin move, finds it for two. ESPN's coverage of the WNBA is presented by Google, official WNBA changemaker and proud advocate of women in sports. And in part by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And American Express. See all that you can expect when you're with Amex. Back here in D.C., Washington, without one of their most recognizable faces. For more on that, we'll send it to the third member of our crew, Kim Adams. Yeah, Tiffany, they are missing the 2019 WNBA MVP, Elena Deladon, who is still recovering 
from her second back surgery, which occurred in December 2020. She did say in her YouTube series, instantly she felt much better after this surgery than the first. She has been in practice. She's doing some shooting. She's running. Recently have added in some contact, but still no live five on five. And she's really learning her, relearning her body and how to move efficiently so that she's not putting unnecessary pressure on the spine, learning how to land, how to balance, and posturally how to sit and walk. So Coach Tebow did not give us a timetable yet, but said we're not counting on having her for a while, Tiffany. Well, thanks so much, Kim. And you saw Leilani Mitchell on defense able to strip away the ball, get the steal, and finding Tina Charles for the first two points of the Mystics. But you know they want Elena Deladon back because she had back surgery to book in the 2020 season so two surgeries for the two-time mvp and it's a much anticipated return for the superstar after a 19-month layoff as natasha cloud gets on the board cloud just able to blow by and get a piece of the baseline there on the take but you're right tiffany this could be a phases uh, roster for Mike Tebow's group, starting off with getting Maisha Hines Allen back, which they hope to in a few days, and Della Don, hopefully back at some point, and maybe even Emma Mieseman, post Euro basket and post Olympics. Again, going to Tina Charles, the vet, the 2012 MVP, showing some great form early on, bringing them back as the Mystics now trailing by just two. And that's important because Tina Charles missed some shots that she admitted she should have made in their loss to Chicago, and that allows Washington to get back and set up their defense. This is a Phoenix team that wants to run, and the Mystics will need to set up and get their matchup straight. Well, China, we saw this Mystics crew really trying to find their footing and right there, quick one-two step to the hoop is Natasha Cloud, and that's something that Mike Tebow is welcoming on this 8 nothing run to seeing his backcourt getting involved early along with Tina Charles, but then there's Diana Tarazzi on the other side. Plaisance called for the personal foul. It's a shooting foul, so. Now Tarazi's at the line. We'll shout out Tina Charles and what she's able to do, collecting her 6,000th career point on her last bucket. And so Washington, who got off to a slow start now, four or five from the floor. Mitchell, again, with the fine to Charles. Well, you want to pull Brittany Griner out and force her to guard multiple actions, and that's what she had to do right there on the ball screen. Good job, Leilani Mitchell, keeping the dribble alive, and Tina Charles moving without the ball. Brittany Griner spotting up from the free throw line. Charles corrals the rebound. And you're okay with that shot. Like, you want Brittany Griner to take that high post shot, keep her out of the paint. Even though she's capable of knocking that down, she does most of her damage down low. And something that Sandy Brondello wants to see more of from Brittany Griner with that 6'9 frame is rebounding. That's something that's going to be a key focus there as there was a loose ball and a second chance opportunity for Washington. <laughs> Good two-man game right here. And Leilani Mitchell keeps Brittany Griner occupied. And Griner is big enough where she should be able to cover a little bit more ground there def defensively and keep that pass from going in. And Tarasi doesn't need much space. And right here, I, I get it, Teresa Plaisance, because Diana has to be one of the most physical offensive players we've ever seen in this league. She creates contact with her body on the offensive end. And Plaisance call for the foul. Kia Nurse sees that rim in and out, but the ball controlled as Petty with the rebound sets up the second chance opportunity and Skyler Diggins Smith knocking down the trifecta. Diggins Smith who really got her footing, both she and Tarazi did a nice job, top 10 in scoring last year in the Wubble. And now with a healthy big three as Brittany Griner a part of that bunch. They can do a lot of damage, but good defense there from Ariel Atkins. Mitchell with a crossover.
one thing we talked about, Tiffany, is how this Mystics roster is continuing to round out. So you see the kinks on the offensive end, but defensively, good job here of Ariel Atkins getting out to contest. She did hit that screen a little by Griner, but she is a great defender, has a lot of respect to the WNBA, but what Mike Tebow said about Atkins is she has now moved up the depth chart on offense as well. There is not a Lelena Deladon, there's no Emma Mieseman, and she is ready to step up on the perimeter and take on more responsibility. Off the mark there from Charles, and to your point, China, she is coming off a career year, and so they've asked a little bit more of her and Ariel Atkins, and so we'll see what she's able to produce after that fantastic season. Turnover in Mystics basketball. Well, already, LaTrina, you're seeing something a little bit different than what we saw here Saturday against Chicago. In this offense for Washington, getting in more to a rhythm than what we saw before. Yeah, and it's going to take some time. And Mike Tebow said, this is not a democratic offense. We know who needs to be taking shots, and they've got to get the ball. Shea Petty on that turnover. She takes it all the way in, floats it up, and leaves it just off the back iron. Back the other way, it's four on four as Atkins and Petty trailing. Plaisance finding Charles and Charles backing down along Smith. We forget because it's been a while that Tina Charles is one of the toughest one-on-one -on -one guards in the low block in the WNBA. It has been. Megan Walker, a new acquisition for the Phoenix Mercury this season, coming over from New York and sees that one bounce in. Yeah, nice little screen by Petty to get Walker open. And Diggins Smith whistled for the foul, but she got a like. The up and down action so far in this one. Yeah, Phoenix is going to need players to come off the bench and be ready to step up. And Shea Petty sets a nice little screen there. Clouds late to come over in rotation. And already Phoenix more comfortable from the three-point line, shooting a high percentage at five for nine early in this game. So Diggins Smith takes a seat. And Charles, who has really been offensive-minded so far in this first quarter, sees someone else to put up a shot, and that's Sydney Weiss. Weiss, who just had so little time to get accustomed to this entire system. She was brought on Thursday of last week, and then, boom, Saturday is her first game. Not a lot of time. She's got one practice in, but she adds another veteran presence in that guard position. Yeah, Mike Tebow is high on her. He said she could be a player you see as a starter at some point this season. Again, Alicia Clark's injury is what, something you have to remember. They lost Ariel Powers in the offseason, so their depth in the backcourt is, is changing and shifting. So along with Ariel Atkins, Weiss could be someone that we see really take hold in the rotation. First couple of points for Weiss, the fifth-year pro out of Oregon State. Turner at the top, here's Petty. Petty playing against her former team. Remember, she delivered that heartbreaker in the playoffs a season ago in the Wubble. Erica McCall able to snag it away. And we expect to see Phoenix go deep in their bench tonight, considering the fact that they played, this is their third game in five days. So we have to look for signs of fatigue. Sandy Brondello said she saw some in their loss to Connecticut, but we could see players that haven't seen as much time get a little bit more of that tonight as she tries to get her big three some rest. In her ninth season as head coach of the Phoenix Mercury, and she said, you know, we saw a little bit of fatigue, some road weariness. This has been a tough schedule thus far. As Shea Petty with the look off and McCall with the stuff. Walker getting tangled up, place. Oh, that's Weez who holds her hands up, and she's whistled for the foul. Sydney Weez is a competitor. Don't let that braided ponytail fool you. She is a competitor. McCall over from weak side gets a piece of it, and that's what you want to see if you're Mike Tebow. Weez looking to compete, and she absolutely did foul there. She was not in legal defensive position, but that's what you want to see, that kind of energy 
if you're Coach Tebow from Weiss and McCall on the defensive end. Well, let's take a look at the upcoming WNBA schedule on national television Wednesday on CBS Sports Network. You've got the Indiana Fever taking on Dewana Bonner and the Connecticut Sun at 7 Eastern. Then Thursday, it's Seattle and Minnesota at 8 Eastern. Remember, for all the games, you can go to WNBA.com or visit the WNBA app. And of course, coming up tonight after this game, there'll be a rematch of the opening day game between Seattle and Las Vegas, also a rematch of last year's 2020 WNBA Finals. It's Seattle got the best of the Aces on Saturday. Brianna Stewart, <laughs> I mean, wow. Looking like she is ready for another championship run. Tarazi with a long three. Mitchell bringing it up the right side of the court, Mitchell. Again, finding Tina Charles. Charles just kind of banking herself out, hanging out in that paint. And she's able to get up easy shot. One thing you see early is Washington is getting touches in the paint off of the bounce to Tina Charles in a variety of ways. And when the ball touches the paint, Washington's offense, just like many other teams, is much better. Under a minute to go in this opening quarter. Walker following her shot gets the rebound. And her second chance won't go as well. Mitchell swings it over to Kiara, Les Kiara Leslie. And Leslie whistled for the travel. Tina Charles is really active to start this game, using her body, trying to hold off the defenders, and does that. She takes up so much space. She's got great hands, and credit Leilani Mitchell putting that right on the money without a lot of space to operate. She'll get a breather in this final minute of the first quarter, 1916, Phoenix with the advantage. They got out to an eight nothing start. They've held on to this lead and Smith going right back at it, not giving up on the play. You saw McCall trying to fight through that screen and Smith was called for the personal foul. Puts them in the penalty, so McCall will shoot a couple. Well, just a reminder to our viewers that the WNBA is back, and you can be a part of it by playing in the WNBA 25th season free play contest set up your lineup for a chance to win a pair of tickets to the Commissioner's Cup, as well as nightly bonus cash prizes. Play for free through May 21st at WNBA.com slash one day. I think I could be a pretty good GM. Oh, yeah. I have to jump in. I'm probably too late, though. Look, man. I'm, but this is right my speed. I'm calling you. You're the plug. That's all <laughs> I'm going to say. <laughs> you're the plug, LaChina. Going in too strong in the offensive foul called on Tarazi. And that's her second personal foul here in this first quarter. Diana Tarazi looking to drive. And yes, Erica McCall outside of the restricted area, well established. Mitchell gets it up just before time expires in the first quarter and it bounces off. But certainly a good start for the Phoenix Mercury and uh, Diana Tarazi, the future Hall of Famer, coming out with eight points in this one. We'll see more from the, excuse me, six points. We'll come. Welcome back to Washington, D.C. I am joined by Diana Tarazi. And Diana, Tina Charles has really started to find her way inside. How can you guys make things a bit more difficult for her down there? Uh, play harder. Uh, we all know what Tina can do on the block. So um, if she gets the ball there, uh, she's pretty hard to stop. So uh, we just got to be better. And you guys had struggled to shoot a little bit from the outside in the first two games. Tonight, you guys have already knocked down five from deep. What's allowed that rhythm to start to develop? Yeah, you know, we really don't uh, worry about makes or misses. Uh, you know, we just kind of shoot them, and if they go in, great. If not, you, uh, you got to make it up some other way. All right, thanks for the time, Diana. Bye, guys. Thank you. 
And Kim, that's exactly what Skylar Diggins Smith talked to us about. She and Diana Tarazi got in the gym together a lot coming into the season and worked really hard on their shots. And as Kia Nurse scored there, Skylar Diggins Smith said, listen, I feel good even when it doesn't go in because I know we've put in the work and we have the confidence in it. And basically they feel like the shots are going to fall at some point. Absolutely, LaChina, and just thinking about, you know, Kia Nurse was a part of that as well. She got a chance to get some time in with her new teammates as well. Meanwhile, Tina Charles, who is just having herself a great night, double digits already in the first quarter. You see what her numbers are compared to the rest of the team. Well, and Diana made a great point in terms of not letting Tina catch the ball where she's been catching it in the low block, really easy. You got to work to kind of keep her out of that space where she can just turn and score and really work hard to keep her out of position. Now let's see who will be the offensive threat here with the crew on the floor for the Mystics place on. the turnaround, the mid-range won't go. Griner nabbing the rebound. Turner asking for it. Nurse looking in, finds Griner. Some help defense coming from the backside. Griner putting it up in his foul. You love to see Brittany Griner this aggressive early on in the game. Coming down, really taking command, using her body. She's got a size advantage over McCall. Turns back to the left side, and there's nothing you can do about that. And she has played some of her best ball games against this Washington team. The player who was down in Bradenton, a part of that shortened season in 2020 then stepped away from basketball after she left the bubble bubble in august and this was a time for her to just kind of refresh and reset herself and get prepared for this 2021 season yeah she said i hadn't really had a break since college i mean this is a player that has played year round non-stop and you can't imagine the physical and mental toll that happens there so she got to refresh and honestly Phoenix is at their best if Brittany Griner has a great season. I mean, you know what Skylar Diggins-Smith can do. You know what Diana Tarazi can do, but Griner's the X factor. She also got some opportunities to kind of play overseas on a Russian league title. Got back into the flow of things. Mitchell finding a cutting play. Sounds too strong from 55 and wide, and then Diggins-Smith colliding with Mitchell, and she's still down. She has not even been able to open that right eye. And now she's got eyes open here, but. Tough blow to the face and she appears to be okay and, and ready to go. But just the addition of Skylar Devin Smith to this team, a player who had a full season last year, felt like she had something to prove, and her teammates being a little too aggressive here as Kia Nurse's whistle for the charge. Welcome back, Natasha Cloud. You just feel that Philly tenacity early in this game from Cloud on defense, and that's what Mike Tebow said he wanted to see from her. We have to have her set the tone defensively, her physicality, her size, her attitude, her toughness, her imprint has to be felt on this team, especially with some of the absences that they have on the roster right now. Well, she is their best perimeter defender. Is Natasha Cloud rotating over to Nurse, not in time, even at well short. Just under eight minutes to go in this second quarter. Tina Charles back on the floor. She had 10 first quarter points on the miss. Oh boy, Charles had a switch on her. Would have loved to seen her just take that to the rim. Digging Smith going right at Plaisance. Plaisance with the block this time, committing, jumping with her, and commits the foul. And this is where Phoenix is really good at getting to the free throw line. Skylar Diggins Smith. Ooh, that must have been body. It was clean up top there. But she can get to the free throw line along with Diana Tarazi, along with Kia Nurse, three of the best in the WNBA, in fact, in the top 10 in getting to the free throw line since the beginning of last season. 
Blazons will check out now after that third personal foul. Tarazi checking back in. Diggin Smith in her second year with Phoenix, acquired in a trade from Dallas back in February of 2020. And for more on that, and Skylar Dick and Smith will send it over to Kim. Well, China, you were talking about those workouts between Diana and Skylar this summer. They were both in Phoenix. Well, they started out working out five days a week, and then Skylar found out that Diana was actually going in on Sundays too and said, hold up, hold up, I need to come with you. So the two of them were going hard six days a week and Skylar said she just learned so much, the nuances of how Diana does what she does. She said they really built their chemistry. They're both married, they both have a son. In the bubble, they just hadn't really had time to sit down and talk, things like that. So they've really been able to develop that chemistry and Skylar said Diana has really just introduced me to that next level and what it takes to be great and to win a championship. Yeah, I mean, Skylar Dickens Smith said the best thing that happened to her in the off season is she got to get into the gym with Diana Taurasi, arguably the greatest who ever played the game. And she said the one thing that people don't recognize when it comes to Diana is how she builds and empowers her teammates. You don't want to play against her, but you want to play beside her because she will give you all the confidence you need. And Skylar really got to feel that in the offseason. Hopping in and out, second chance. There's Erica McCall, McCall a player that Mike Tebow is really high on, feels like she's got more to give. He wants to bring out the best in her. Saw some good signs there on Saturday. Well, she might have been their best player on Saturday. <laughs> Honestly, in terms of being in a rhythm and level of aggressiveness. The steal, Mitchell finding Atkins. Atkins pulling up in transition and hits the jumper. And Ariel Atkins mentioned to us that on the offensive end, she has got to hit that mid-range shot. She said, my spot up is good from three, but I've got to work on finishing at the rim and my mid-range game. Griner with the charge, and there again, McCall is pulling up and feeling it she had her feet set absorbing the contact and her team needing all of that injury trailing by five one time for the support from the nba brothers lifting up their sisters in the wnba sporting the t-shirts in season 25 not just that the jersey wear walking through chris paul and company Dawning Jersey showing a lot of love and then there's the reciprocal relationship you got Alicia Car Clark wearing a Washington Wizards jersey as well and, and Kim I know that we got a chance to see Russell w Westbrook in the building what you got yeah well Natasha Cloud just talked about how incredible he has been when he first got to DC he came over to the Mystics facilities and spent two hours introducing himself to everyone and Russell actually has a new colorway of his signature why not 0.4 shoe called empowerment and it is inspired by the colors of the WNBA ball and he says let's normalize uplifting and empowering women every single day so if you didn't have a reason to support Russell Westbrook you do now and yes all of the Mystics players today came in wearing Wizards jerseys as they are in the playing game tonight as well against the Celtics Natasha Cloud, who has a great relationship with many of the Mystics, uh, excuse me, Wizards players, knocks down that shot right there. And that was a welcome three, as that was their first of this ball game. Well, Russell Westbrook's wife, I believe, was a player at UCLA, so he understands and knows the importance of the women ballers. Mm -hmm. And what a supporter he has been. It was great to see him in the building on Saturday. Yeah, and I love it, too, because I think there's been always a respect level. If you play the game of basketball at this elite high level, you definitely know what it takes to get to that place. But I think also the respect that they gain for the women of the WNBA off the court, especially as they were continuing their work at leading the charge for social justice. There was the homie. Russ West 44 supporting the Mystics in their season opener Saturday. You know, he was just kind of stealth coming through here. You know, obviously there is a limited crowd and capacity inside the arena. 
But you know, he was, you know, usually he likes to be really flashy with his attire. Just came in under the radar. Question is, how do you feel about this play-in mm, well, situation in the NBA playoffs? Um, is this an everybody gets a trophy thing? I mean, I'm happy for you know, all the all the teams that get to benefit from that, but uh, I mean, I feel like the NBA has enough teams in the playoff window. <laughs> and remember, the Wiz uh, Wizards will play the Boston Celtics tonight in that play-in game. They took care of Charlotte in that final game. They were the opening game of the playing game for the NBA. Trailing big to the Pacers. Well, Natasha Cloud has really started to take over in this game. Keeping in mind, she took off of last season. And Mike Tebow said she's still, oh, nice cut there by Sophie Cunningham. She's still coming into it, but she hit a three, which is big for her. Getting some defensive toughness as well. McCall working on Cunningham. Griner off the miss. Griner, who has been relatively quiet offensively, five points in just 13 minutes, and there, Brianna Turner on the putback. Something that we expect to see more of is the evolution of Brianna Turner. Yeah, and on the offensive glass there, where Phoenix has the big advantage, they've got 10 offensive rebounds, and they are plus nine, if my math is correct so far in this game. And the aggressiveness of Tina Charles continuing as Griner commits the foul. Diane Tarasi looking to push, getting to the middle of the floor, just a beautiful pass to a cutting Shea Petty. I mean, look at the thrust. That's right into the hands of Petty. Right on the money. It's the kind of teammate you want to play with. And Diana always makes the right play. Doesn't have to shoot the ball. She's not one of those superstars. Just wants to get the ball to the right place. Well, in the process, though, she's been able to amass a whole lot of points throughout her career in the all-time leading score in the WNBA and fourth all-time for assists. And that is going to be three personal fouls for Brittany Griner. So I know that... Mike Tebow's got to be smiling and a little happy for the next 3-12 for this second <laughs> quarter. It's going to open up the paint a little bit. Charles bringing them just a little bit closer. Now a five-point difference between the two. Three minutes to go. And on the handoff, the foul whistled against Natasha Cloud, trying to plead her case, but not hearing it. 33-28, Phoenix on top. ESPN's coverage of the NBA play-in tournament begins Wednesday, first at 7.30 Eastern. The Grizzlies host the Spurs in the Western Conference 9-10 game with a losing team eliminated, followed by the 7-8 game between the Warriors and Lakers. Coverage begins with Stephen A's Sports Center at 7. Well, certainly, I think a lot of people will be interested in seeing Steph versus LeBron. Meanwhile, plenty to love here is Shea Petty knocking down the top of the key three. Playing against her old team. Let's not forget what happened in the playoffs <laughs> last year with Shea Petty and Phoenix. Oh, I can Sticking tell it to you. The Mystics. I can tell you that the Mystics do not have short memories, and they still remember that heartbreaking loss of Shea Petty was able to take it to him as McCall takes it in. I mean, Erica McCall gets 90% of her baskets off the of activity, cutting to the cup, offensive rebound, making herself available for the pass, cutting hard off of the screen and roll. I've just really been impressed by her. And how about Tina Charles with the recognition as well? The double team comes over and McCall takes it in with the physical finish at the cup. McCall in her fifth season in the WNBA, played her college ball at Stanford, little known fact, she is the sister to Dewana Bonner, the baller in Connecticut. Boy, she is like buckets. She's like a walking bucket. On well, the Connecticut Sun look really good. I'm impressed with Kurt Miller's team. They've been without Jasmine Thomas. Don't forget, Alyssa Thomas is out with injury. And they... Uh, John Quell Jones is back. Jones is back. Rion January, I thought, looked strong against mm -hmm. Phoenix. 
But you're right. I mean, John Quell Jones and Dewana Bonner, two unicorns on the floor at once. <laughs> Tough to guard. Atkins on the hesitation. The whistle on the floor, stoppage in play there. Foul goes against Phoenix's Sophie Cunningham. And Phoenix is just trying to get out of the second quarter without any more foul trouble. Rihanna Turner is the only person in the starting lineup that doesn't have two or more fouls. And that will be critical, of course, something we'll keep our eye on through the end of this half and going into the early part of the third quarter. And again, this is this is to a team. You think about some of the foul trouble that they're experiencing, but there's just a little rust that you kind of expect. Only a couple of preseason games. Some of the rust that you expect to see early on in the season. The call stuck, but quickly looking for the former MVP, Tina Charles, and Turner coming down with the rebound. Charles doesn't get that one to go, but she has been fantastic in this first half scoring her 6,000 career point 15 points already and a lot of whistles here before we close out the half Ariel Atkins whistled for the personal her first you see the numbers there of Tina Charles 15 points six rebounds already outpacing her numbers in scoring from Saturday when she put up 14. And she just passed number 10 on the all-time points list. Lauren Jackson, congratulations, who is gonna be in the 2021 Naismith Hall of Fame class. And guess who's right ahead of Tina Charles in spot number eight? I don't know. Lisa Leslie. Lisa, okay. I just wanted to stop you, Tiffany. I just wanted to stop you. I was, I was sitting there, I was <laughs> racking my brain, like, wait a minute. But imagine being on that list if you're Tina Charles. Only thing missing is that championship trophy. It's Sydney Weiss. Only the second three-pointer for Washington. Something that they are looking to get in more of a groove. They were four of 30 in their first game. Dickens Smith puts it up there for Turner. Tried to tap it in. And some contact underneath the basket. Switching man-to-man -man by Washington and Tina Charles has done a nice job on those switches of Keeping Skylar Diggins Smith from really getting any anything inside. We did see her get fouled Once on the inside, but I think Washington done a nice job there in containing Well coming up on the WNBA halftime report presented by State Farm with Monica Bignut and Andrea Carter first half breakdown along with some sweetness in Seattle. You won't want to miss it. I'm telling you, this is going to be high energy. Oh, what? That's all I'm going to say. Our okay. halftime crew, <laughs> really? Oh. Best in the biz. Come I love it. Now. I love it. I'm here for it. Every ounce of turn up in the studio. Go on here, Dre and Monica. And looking superb while doing it. <laughs> I mean, Monica looks like she works out seven days a week. I need her, her arms. She says she wake up flawless. <laughs> I know Drea works, works out every day. Oh, yeah. That's, that's well known. 41-35. <laughs> Timeout taken on the floor. We'll see an interesting close to this first half when you come back. Listen up, folks. Be sure you tune in to the Around the Rim podcast, ESPN's only women's basketball podcast hosted by my girl, Achana Robinson. New episodes drop weekly, and you can subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. What you talking about, girl? Now, we see Christy Winter Scott there. <laughs> did you see Christy and her daughter, Bree, who I believe is going to Georgetown? Christy is a great at Maryland, played during the Chris Weller days. We love to see that legacy of basketball passed around in the family. Big ups to Christy, who actually has made an appearance on your podcast. Kia Nurse rotating into help position there, and good job of getting outside of the restricted area. 
There she is. Charge. She is. Does a great job on the Mystics broadcast along with Megan McPeak. Tarazi in the corner for three. She does it better than anybody at the most in the NBA and the WNBA, excuse me. Proud. Working on Smith. Got to get up a shot before the end of the half. And Cloud kisses it off the backboard. That's a toughness basket. That's Philly tough for you, Cloud. Making something out of nothing. Natasha Cloud, three for four from the floor, seven points. And Natasha Cloud flexing those muscles. You said Philly strong. Oh, yeah. She's got it going on. Her Mystics still in this one. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the WNBA presented by Google here in Washington, D.C. at the half between the Phoenix Mercury and the Washington Mystics. The Mercury with a seven-point advantage here at the half as we welcome you along courtside. LaChina Robinson, Tiffany Green here with you. And we talked about the vets off the top, Diana Tarazi and Tina Charlson, and they're stepping up to the plate doing their usual things. Yeah, as expected, Diana Tarazi really setting the tone. This is a tough stretch for her team, but she came out swinging on the offensive end right here. Just a nice paint touch for Skylar Diggins-Smith, and then the space creation by Diana off of the bounce. I don't know if it's quite six feet, but it's enough to get this shot off as she jukes Leilani Mitchell to get the shot up. And Tina Charles was so aggressive to start this game. I really love her attack mentality in transition, just finding space, attacking the feet of Brittany Griner. And she's gonna have to continue to be in that mode as we see Washington's offense is still a work in progress. And you see the teammates loving on Tina Charles who got busy also hitting that 6,000 career point mark. Congratulations, Tina. Well deserved as she passed the 2021 Hall of Fame inductee Lauren Jackson along with the future Hall of Famer Simone Augustus to plant herself at ninth all time. And let's check in with the third member of our crew, Kim Adams. Thanks, Tiffany. Well, when we talked to Coach Tebow in advance of these first couple games, he felt that Tina was playing with a little bit of a chip on her shoulder, but when we talked to Tina, she said, I don't feel that I have anything to prove, but she does feel like she has things she'd still like to accomplish, and winning a championship is something she has not been able to do yet, and that is why she came to Washington. She said there is a different culture here than the one she had experienced in New York at the time, and that is what she wanted. It was a match made in heaven. She said she knows the Mystics are about that winning culture. Well, certainly they are the 2019 WNBA champions, brought home the first title for the franchise, reconnecting with Mike Tebow, but also the opportunity to play alongside Elena Deladon. That was something that was supposed to happen several years prior, but did not as they were both supposed to go to the University of Connecticut. You see Lena Deladon on your screen, and you're right. They were supposed to be teammates then. Deladon leaves Chicago, comes to Washington, brings the championship culture here, bought the trophy here, and now she and Tina are reunited. But when you look at Tina's resume, she's done it all. I mean, she's climbing the charts in every category. Nice move there by Griner on the, on the finish. But, of course, she wants to cap it off with the championship. That's what really defines you, especially if you're coming from a school like Connecticut. Absolutely, when there is a championship pedigree all around, Charles off the mark there. And one of those former Huskies, Diana Tarazi, a three-time WNBA champion with this group, the last one coming in 2014 for Phoenix. Higgins leading the break. Sizing up, setting up in the half court for the Mystics. Cloud, who was four or five from the floor with nine points. But that's a player they got to get going. And Leilani Mitchell 
as she finds Teresa Blaisons. Good movement, and that's one thing that's worked for Washington is they're not just standing and watching. There was some hesitancy in their offense, as even Mike Tebow admitted with some of the unfamiliar places and faces on the court at once, but they're moving with much more confidence tonight. Turner finding Tarazi. Tarazi over to Nurse to give, and Brittany Griner making the extra pass on offense and good find. And Washington did a lot of things well defensively on that possession on their help rotations, but Phoenix kept the ball moving. Cloud finds Atkins. Last touch by the Mercury, so the Mystics keep it with 14 seconds to go on the shot clock. Phoenix just really stuck with it on this offensive possession. Little handoff, several points of penetration, the extra pass to PG, and then Rihanna Turner waiting under the cup. How about this heave from Diana Tarazi down the court to Skylar Diggins Smith? A little two on two basketball. And going up, and Diggins Smith will shoot a couple from the charity strike. I mean, Phoenix is by far one of the best teams in this league when it comes to pushing the ball off of the pass. I mean, that was on point. Diggins Smith should have been able to just pick that up and go right to the rim. This is a team who averages about 12 and a half points their first two games in transition tonight. They have not been able to put up any points in transition. However, Diggins Smith hits the first of two from the line. Fifty forty one. Phoenix was led the entire way and knocking it down back the other way and a three pointer from Cloud. That's where Natasha Cloud has grown over the course of her career. And how about another bucket for Cloud? Nine. You want some? Come get some. Natasha Cloud igniting this crowd inside the entertainment and sports arena. Natasha Cloud who opted out of last season, returning to her 2019 form, feeling it right now, bringing her team within four. One thing you know you're gonna get from Natasha Cloud, that Philly toughness and Cloud Nine, feeling it with the aggressive mentality, hitting the three, and right here, getting to the rim finesse. ESPN's coverage of the WNBA is presented by Google, official WNBA changemaker and proud advocate of women in sports. And in part by Gatorade Zero, all the electrolytes, zero sugar. And AT&T 5G, fast, reliable, and secure. Natasha Cloud, who has been showing off tonight, 14 points going six of seven from the floor. Drastic difference from what we saw in the season opener. But this is a player who helped lead the team to a WNBA championship. And then she goes into next season saying, I am going to fight for something greater than myself. A great social advocate and fighting for social justice. She said, look, I am more than an athlete and I have a responsibility to my community. And when you think about just how she helped to lead the charge last season for not just her team and the WNBA, but for athletes across all sports, her voice rang so loud. I mean, she's unafraid and she's unapologetic. She uses her voice to speak up for the voiceless. You know, obviously in a league of majority black women who were impacted in a multitude of ways by what happened in the racial reckoning in our country over the last year, she was phenomenal. I mean, she is brilliant and has really been a transformational leader in not just this league, but in all of sport. And an example and a role model for all to all to see. I just love one of those iconic photos where she's holding her hand up with, you know, the fist up in the air as well. And, and she also made a point not to just say, I'm going to stand at the forefront and be one of those voices, but she does the everyday work too here as the arena is located in Southeast DC. She's used her voice to try to help the schools in the area as well. Just a player that you have to admire 
what she's done. Forfeited her salary in that 2020 season. And she's a perfect fit for Washington. I mean, <laughs> this is the, the place for her to be where change is made. And, you know, just a, a player that is now on a multi-year deal. So she's going to be here. She wants to be here. And you just couldn't ask for a better leader on and off the court. Brittany Griner picking up her fourth personal foul on the other end. And Tarazi again, the one-footer, hops up, pure shooter. Sandy Brondello says when you watch her, it's just such a pure shot. Nothing like it, and she will work extremely hard to get open. She had to run across the length of the court to get that shot, and then not much space, but gets it to go. And the traveling violation called against Charles. I mean, this is the hardest part of guarding time with Tarasi, is how she creates space. She comes off of handoffs, off of ball screens, and you think you're in front of her, but she's got her eye on the bucket the entire time. And LaChina, what did you say? The fountain of youth? She's drinking from the fountain of youth? I mean, Tarazi is in year 17, spent her entire career with the Phoenix Mercury, and yet she still looks as solid as she did when she was shooting up at UConn. Well, she's taking better care of herself. You know, she's had the back issues and, you know, various injuries over the last few years, which have slowed her up. But the amount of time she puts into preparing, I mean, six days a week in the gym in the off season, according to Skylar Diggins Smith. You see her stretching and doing all kinds of work just to get warmed up to play every night. I mean, you admire her as a player and what she does between the lines, but it's the work we don't see is why she is one of the greatest, if not the. A wonderful career that she's been able to put together in that time and off season work with their player development coach, Zach O'Brien. Has really helped her to get her body in shape and still showing a great passion for the game. Phoenix stretching the lead back out to seven. They call on 31 and white again. Charles working on Griner and flips it in. Hey, I'm here for get, get your popcorn. Because this back and forth between Griner and Tina Charles, I want to see it. And Diana Tarazi told her team at half, we got to get the ball inside to BG. With nine points now and some contact down low. Tina Charles backing down the shot blocker. It really disarms her with the fake. Pretends to go baseline. Brittany Griner fights for it, as shot blockers often do. And Tina took it right back to the middle. When you see the duel tonight between Griner and Charles, and Charles is getting the best of Griner as of now, doubling her in points. Both she and Griner have four personal fouls. Missing the first of two is Griner. You talk about just how she can affect both ends of the floor, two-time defensive player of the year, as well as a two-time scoring champion in the WNBA. Puts it up. And there's Weiss chasing down the offensive board. Charles meeting another tough defender in Turner who got a piece of it and she knocked it out of bounds. Brianna Turner is a budding star on the defensive end in this league. You mentioned Brittany Griner did not play the entire season last year when she left the bubble. Boy, did Turner step up with defense and rebounding. She's just got so much potential. Yeah, DG finished third in the Defensive Player of the Year voting and a force to be reckoned with in years to come. And Griner just extending the arm, the length of the 6'9 Griner made that bucket easy out of Baylor. Too easy. And Mike Tebow said we cannot give her a steady diet of the same type of defense. So they're going to have to change something as BG has the eye of the tiger here in the third. Cloud. Off the miss, BG with the rebound. Washington has got to move the ball around, get some different hands to touch the ball, force Phoenix's defense to shift. And Turner recognized she had a guard on her backside and commanded the ball 
and that's rather new for her. I mean, we talk a lot about her defense, but she's got some offensive upside that is yet to develop. And you talk about always just the impact that playing overseas can make for a player, none more than Brianna Turner. Atkins tried to put it back. Double digit lead now for Phoenix. Weiss. And Atkins knocks down the three. Ariel Atkins with her first triple of the game. Tarazi just so tough, cuffs it and leaves it up at the dish. Just glides to the rim, makes it look so easy, and no one there on the backside to help. The offense is starting to heat up for both teams in transition here. Skyler Diggins Smith can't get there in time to contest, and Diana Tarazi just turning the corner. Sweet glide right to the rack. 17 points now for Tarazi, who will take a breather along with Diggins Smith. So it's Turner, Griner, Nurse, Petty, and Cunningham on the floor for Phoenix. The visitors in the midst of a three-game road trip to start this season, and the Mercury turn it right back over. One thing to keep your eye on down the stretch of this one, Phoenix has the lead right now, but keep in mind, three games on the road in five days will fatigue set in. Well, our WNBA coverage continues Sunday as Sabrina Ionescu and the New York Liberty visit Candace Parker in the Chicago Sky at 1 Eastern on ESPN, also available on the ESPN app. The New York Liberty already matching their win total from a season ago and exceeding it as Sabrina Ionescu has been balling. Meanwhile, Brittany Griner was whistled for a technical foul. We're not exactly sure, We're trying to clarify what exactly happened on that last play. It may have gotten a tech there. Yep, we believe that the wave off and a little bit of French there from Brittany Griner. It came after she was called for the traveling violation. So Griner will take a seat just over two and a half to go in the third quarter. And some frustration there from BG. Cunningham out of the University of Missouri. That wouldn't have counted anyway. That one called against Phoenix. And these are important minutes for Phoenix, you know, with their big three all on the bench right now. Nurse is on the floor. You'd expect that she would kind of lead, a thing, lead off things on the offensive end, but we'll see what they can do on defense first. Mitchell finding a cutting McCall. Nice recognition. Leilani Mitchell. Not shooting the ball well tonight, still over, but that's her eighth assist. And it's her vision, but it's also her teammates in movement. Nurse for three, that's how we started off the ball game, and Kia Nurse knocking down the trifecta. That's what they wanted to see out of her as they acquired her from New York. Yeah, Sandy Brondello said, we just want her to keep her confidence and her aggressiveness. We know she's a shooter. Javante Zealous. On the miss. And quickly meets Nurse near half court. Cunningham with an open look for three. Bat it down and quickly out of the hands of Nurse and into the hands of Sophie Cunningham. And that's Sophie Cunningham. Those two plays that encompasses who she is. She can hit the long ball, but then she's never going to give up on a play. Right here, just continues to dive to the rim. And how about the reverse? This is a player who is just gritty, tough. We mentioned out of the University of Missouri. Her favorite player growing up, Diana Tarazi, and now she gets to play with her. 
And as we mentioned earlier, you know, the injury to, to Bria Hartley, Kia Vaughn is not yet activated for the Phoenix Mercury coming back late from international commitments. So as this roster continues to get healthy and get deeper, they're gonna need everyone off of the pine. It's not just gonna be the big three. Shea Petty up ahead, a running Cunningham, one-on-one -on -one with Weiss, and continuing to extend this lead out, the largest for Phoenix tonight. You gotta be happy if you're Sandy Brondello. You knew you would need to extend the minutes off of the pine, and they're answering. And a tough shot there for Mitchell, leaves it short. Well, Washington struggled against Chicago with guarding fast break and perfect pass from Petty. How many times has Phoenix done this? Not always resulting in a bucket, but just that pass ahead. Something they've been really good at to start this season. Yeah, just two fast break points tonight. And for more on Sophie Cunningham, we'll send it over to Kim. Yeah, Tiffany, I was at the Mercury's game up at Connecticut the other night. Sophie Cunningham did not get into the game for a second, yet she came out on the floor after the game ended and was getting extra work in, extra shots up. Well, she was ready for her opportunity today. She has brought a ton of energy off the bench, Tiffany. Yeah, Kim, you called that game at yeah. Connecticut. Great job. <laughs> she does it all, you know? I mean, sideline reporter, analyst. She's working she hard. Did. Oh, yeah. She was, you know, we talk about the tough schedule of the Phoenix Mercury. She's had a tough schedule. We want a couple of back-to-backs. Thanks to Amtrak, keeping our girl <laughs> riding up and down the East Coast. First ball, the last two Timeout taken by the Washington Mystics. And here, La China, there was some separation that we saw from the Phoenix Mercury on a 15-6 run. Brianna Stewart coming your way next. You see the numbers that she's put up. She is just so good. Her storm hosting the Las Vegas Aces. That's coming up next, folks. Right here on ESPN2, Ryan Rucco, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe will be on the call for that one. One of my questions for Vegas is, you know, they've got a smaller margin for error without Angel McCautry. We send our thoughts and prayers to McCautry, who's out for the season with an ACL. But that roster was rounding out perfectly in a lot of depth. And now it's going to be required for some other players to step up. I believe Kelsey Plum may be leaving at some point for international competition. And so you've got Raquana Williams on the team. You've got, you know, Jackie Young. Got a lot of pieces there, but uh, not with McCautry's experience. And so she will definitely be missed. Angel McCautry out with a knee injury will miss the remainder of the season. The other thing that will have to happen, I think, for Bill Lambeer's team is for Dierica Hamby to play effective minutes at the three. They call her the big guard. Well, she's going to have to prove it, I think, in some stretches this year. And of course, you've got the reigning MVP in Asia Wilson and getting adjusted to playing as play songs once again, getting in the face of folks. And play songs with the block. Oh, yes. Tough defense here by Washington, very physical. And Plaisance was able to avoid the foul, even though she went up for that and took a swat at it. 1.9 seconds to go. That one put up by Smith. And three quarters in the books from DC and the Phoenix Mercury up by double digits here in Washington. Welcome back to the WNBA on ESPN. I'm joined by Tina Charles. And Tina, we are enjoying watching this. How would you describe the battle going on inside between you and Brittany Griner? Um, I'm, I think we're both just doing what our teams are expecting us to do, um, just what we're known for. Uh, that, that's all we're, we're trying to do, just being professionals out there and just trying to dominate one another. Um, it's always great to play against uh, great talent and, and expose one another when we can. And what do you like about how your team has improved today from the first game as you guys are building that chemistry on the fly? I'm um, just way better energy, you know, not holding our head down. Um, I think that's the main thing, just trying to get stops when we can, trying to push it in transition, find the open man, and just trying to execute just the things we were doing uh, right after that first game in practice. All right, we appreciate you, Tina. Thank you. All right, thank you. 
Well, right now, LaChina, her team still has a lot of work to do. Alana Smith knocking down a three-pointer, continuing to extend out that lead. And the block there from Brittany Griner. Under 10 to go on the shot clock. Zealous kicks at the cloud. Dribble. And the shot clock violation as that one didn't touch the rim. I mean, the three-point line is definitely the game changer, well, one of them in this game. 19% from long range for Washington, 43% for Washington, for Phoenix, but then the rebounding advantage, plus 15 going Phoenix's way with this bench bomb for the Mercury. They're showing up. Well, again, we talked about and knew that the link with Reiner and Turner in there would be difficult, but that rebounding advantage, when you look at the offensive boards, 13 compared to nine, and those second chance points created extra opportunities for Phoenix. Natasha Cloud took those last couple of shots, but again, Ariel Atkins has to be a part of touching the ball. I think they've got to run through Tina sometimes. It's an offense that needs to run deep into the shot clock right now. And Turnover there, things just not going Ariel Atkins' way. And travel. Cloud trying to be stingy on defense, and she's whistled for the foul. And a technical foul called on the Washington Mystics. For a delay of game. And so Kia Nurse will go to the line. I believe they may have called the delay of game and then called a technical foul on Natasha Cloud. The delay of game call, but then the technical, we believe in addition to that. Another O board and leads to Sophie Cunningham from long range. The timeout taken on the floor by the Washington Mystics as the Phoenix Mercury Stroking it from downtown. They've got 10 made threes. And a big advantage here on the road. Well, that was one of the things that Sandy Brondello talked about. She was concerned with just how this team would play after a tough game on the road. And then here coming to Washington after losing to Connecticut and Right now, they are answering the call 76-57 here in D.C. ESPN's coverage of the WNBA is presented by Google, official WNBA changemaker and proud advocate of women in sports. It's time for tonight's Did You Know presented by Google. We go back to the year of 2013 looking at Three draft picks, one, two, three. Griner, Deladon, and Diggins Smith all in the building here tonight and all who have had an excellent career thus far with so much more to prove. When you think about season 25, you've got to mention Tina Thompson, the first pick in the inaugural WNBA draft in 1997. She and her Houston comments would go off to run four WNBA championships dynasty. Man, Tina Thompson, when we talk about the 25th season of the WNBA, is one of the greatest to ever do it. She's the head coach at University of Virginia right now. Played her college basketball at USC, but it was the lipstick for me, oh, yeah. Tiffany. Same here. It was the buckets. It was the way she could stretch the floor as a big and really helped to revolutionize the game. You know, being one of the bigger players that 
had the skill set to step out and do multiple things. But Tina Thompson, I, that's going to be the best part of this 25th season <laughs> is reminiscing on all the players and all the stories and all that the legends have bought to this league. Agreed, absolutely. And I think, too, you think about the Houston comments and their four WNBA titles. Seattle Storm also picked up their fourth. And we mentioned Lauren Jackson. Well, I think Tina Thompson and Lauren Jackson, in the eyes of Sue Bird, talked about just how she revolutionized the game, kind of this positionless player, just a versatile skill set that you see now and players like Elena Deladon and Brianna Stewart. But these are the groundwork pavers in Tina Thompson and others who played alongside her in 2018 Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame inductee. And her son Dylan's beside her. He's such a big guy now. It's crazy <laughs> how quickly these the kids of, of WNBA players grow up, you know, I mean, look at Dylan. My goodness, he's huge. He's grown. We have literally watched him grow up right before our eyes. It's crazy. And remember when the campaign started for the WNBA, you know, it formed and it was this feel of we got next, you know, and, it, and it's kind of evolved in such a way where now you're talking about counting. You know, count it this 25th season, count it for some phenomenal action, the elite players in the country, in the world. And with Ariel Atkins on the free throw line, uh, Tiffany, really quickly on Tina Thompson, she has been one of her mentors in getting her to where she is. She was an assistant coach at Texas when Ariel Atkins was there and has been a big part of her development. I've loved watching the way that the game gives back and specifically the way the players feel the need, the former players feel the need and have the desire to want to help the next gen. Atkins step back three is short. She gets a second chance opportunity, third chance there with play songs and still can't find a bucket. Atkins this time, oh. takes her time, and this is just a, a tough shooting night and start to the season for Ariel Atkins. Yeah, boy, she has gotten some looks that she could put down with her eyes closed. Four for 17, and that's what Mike Tebow wanted. Wanted Tina Charles to take a lion's share of the shots, Atkins to take them, but it just hasn't been her night. Two to go on the shot clock, and with it, expiring nearly expiring there's Kia nurse again I mean how dangerous is Phoenix from the three-point line mm -hmm. not just in their starting lineup but all four players that have come off of the bench have also hit at least one three Petty Alana Smith Megan Walker Sophie Cunningham <laughs> handoff action here by nurse and Teresa Plazant thought she was there. She wasn't. Kia Nurse, who had 10 points in her first game with the Mercury. And one of those UConn players, you just got to keep shooting. She didn't necessarily have her rhythm early on. But again, when you've got a player coach like Diana Tarazi on your team who is just going to consistently encourage you to get after it, to keep shooting and to find your shot and remain confident, that only helps you. Well, one thing that Skylar Diggins Smith said about Kia Nurse is that she's gritty and she's got a high basketball IQ on this team. She's gonna need to be a good defender. You know, you've got a big three, so there's no pressure on her to do a bunch of scoring. She's gotta be a really good defender. She's gotta be a playmaker. And they're hoping to get Bria Hartley back at some point this season which gives them more depth and another player that can fill it up. You know, just remember that this is an Olympic year, you know, post-COVID 2020, obviously everything was thrown off. And there's Bria Hartley, who last year was absolutely balling. They would love to obviously get her back as soon as possible, still dealing with a right knee injury she sustained last year, coincidentally, against the Washington Mystics in the wobble, she will potentially suit up for Team France in the summer games. 
what a season Bria Hartley was having when that injury occurred. But I was surprised to hear that we may see her in the WNBA this summer. She's been working hard in that rehab. Not an easy recovery. Cloud tried to split a couple and somehow was able to get it to go in. Still plenty of time for Washington, but they have definitely have to guard the three-point line. And they've got to continue to get offensive opportunities, whether that's getting on the glass. I mean, shots not falling, you got to keep putting them up and find extra possessions. Blocking foul called against Ariel Atkins, but... Megan Walker looking to be aggressive. I don't know, that may have been an offensive foul. I felt like Atkins had position and the lowering of the shoulder by Walker. Instead, she's whistled for her fourth personal foul. Single digits on the shot clock. Diggins Smith finding Walker across the court, working on Shavante Zellas and Zellas with active hands. Atkins out on the break, finding a trailing Charles, and Charles nearly losing the handle. The extra pass, plaisance. And again, just a tough shooting night from beyond the arc. Just five of 26 for the Mystics from long range. And similar to their loss to Chicago, Mike Tebow would be happy with many of the shots they've taken. I did think they did a better job of getting a touch in the paint off of their threes earlier in the game than they have in some of the recent possessions. But, I mean, Plaisance is capable. Player who can stretch the floor right now, she just has not been able to connect. And if those fall, obviously, The Mystics a little bit closer in it. Instead, Diggins Smith extending the lead out for Phoenix. You know, one thing Skylar Diggins Smith talked to us about today was this: that she is very focused on adding to her resume, putting it out there that she wants a championship. Miss Tina Charles gets the putback, and she wants an Olympic gold medal. It feels like the respect hasn't been always put on her name, but. When you look at her individual accomplishments, she's done it all. She's got to add that ring to it. She's got to play deep into the season, I think, to get into that, that conversation. Four-time All-WNBA team and scored her 1,000th career field goal Sunday and putting up more buckets here tonight. She's in double figures. Yeah, just a great hezzy move. And, you know, that's what, in the WNBA, I was shocked to look at her numbers and I think she's only played in like four career playoff games you know in the playoffs as you know is, is that's where you earn your stripes and that's where you make your mark and she wanted to come to Phoenix because she knows that the expectation is postseason and it is winning a championship and that's what she wants well this is a team that's made 15 playoff appearances and got to the second round of the playoffs a season ago nice easy pass inside from BT to BG Sydney Weiss. Big three black on the floor. Nice. Ah. The Irish connecting for a nice oop pass. Cloud puts her head down, going right at Turner. <laughs> Well, the Phoenix Mercury looking like South Bend Central, the fighting Irish teammates. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the WNBA presented by Google. Well, just a reminder to our viewers coming your way, the upcoming national TV schedule Wednesday. It's the Indiana Fever and Connecticut Sun at 70 Eastern, followed by Seattle Storm taking on Minnesota Lynx Thursday. 
over on NBA TV. And a reminder to you that coming up next, right here, we'll have the Las Vegas Aces and the Seattle Storm. For more on these games, please go to WNBA.com. Yes. Or visit the WNBA app. Make sure you stay up. It's going to be a great game. Another matchup between the Storm and the Aces and Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe, Ryan Rucco on the call. I was kind of jealous on social media. You know, the weather in Seattle for them post-game was like, Amazing, but DC's been Wait a minute, nice. I was so, don't sleep on DC yeah, now. Yeah, DC's been nice, but you, I mean, you know that Seattle quick. air is like. <laughs> <laughs> there but is I'm, no humidity <laughs> here. You right. cherry blossom still out. <laughs> <laughs> you right, and this is home. So <laughs> come on now. One fifty-five remaining in this one, and Lachana. There's just so much to look forward to in this WNBA season. And obviously, many are wondering, will the Seattle Storm repeat? How far can Chicago go with Candace Parker now in the lineup, the Las Vegas Aces? Obviously, one of those title contenders as well with the MVP, Asia Wilson. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the WNBA and look at, how about New York? <laughs> that took down Minnesota today. I was wondering, you know, is New York the real deal? They started out 2-0. and I believe Sabrina Ionescu had a triple-double tonight. <laughs> Add them to the list. And, um, you know, it's going to be an interesting season. I mean, I don't think anybody could call it right now as far as just a, a front runner. And, and this Washington team will get better. They're about to get Maisha Hines Allen back, their leading scorer from last season. You know, Deladon's not too far. We don't know how far, but she will play from what we understand this year. And then Emma Mieseman, if she chooses to return after international competition, that could be the best front, front court in the WNBA. And so with the Olympic break, that allows teams some time to not only rest, but also get better and gel. And so it, it'll be a really interesting season. And everyone wants that money from the Commissioner's Cup. Oh yeah, 500 so, Gs. There's that. I think that's important, too, because it's kind of right around that Olympic break as just before they come back August 12th, Commissioner's Cup final in the Phoenix Suns Arena. They'll play host. Meanwhile, here tonight, it was... 10 different players for the Phoenix Sun getting on the board all, excuse me, Phoenix Mercury, excuse me. All five starters in double figures. It's really impressive effort here tonight by Phoenix. And in particular, their bench, 28 points off the pine in the third game in five days on the road. Sandy Brondello has to be happy with the way her team performed. They walk away with a 90 to 70 victory over the Washington Mystics and Sandy Brondello's team moving to two and one on the season. Meanwhile, Washington still searching to find that nice rhythm of pieces together. They're over two to start the season. Brittany Griner, who had a double-double 43rd of her career. That's a franchise record for BG's 14 points and 10 rebounds. And you see the respect and the love that these players have chopping it up after the game. And Mike Tebow, you know, he mentioned to us that this was going to be a work in progress. He's probably not surprised at all, you know, with the late pieces coming back, the injuries and everything. I mean, it's hard to win in this league. And so when you're not at full strength, it's going to